Being petite has definitely influenced my fashion choices over the years and given me a set of parameters that I like to work within and things that I like to avoid in order to curate a closet that I can actually wear and use. Things that can make me feel my best and then ultimately really serve the life that I'm leading. So in today's video, I wanna go over some of the things that I personally avoid as a petite. They make getting dressed a lot easier, shopping a lot easier, and ultimately creating my personal style a lot more enjoyable. So let's get started. The first thing I avoid as a petite are pants that are too long and can't be easily tailored, cuffed, or tucked. As someone that is on the shorter side, I'm five foot three. this is something that can be really tricky to figure out, and a lot of pants, especially those marketed as full length or wide leg, they tend to be overwhelming on my frame, and over the years, I've learned that there are certain tweaks that are just not easy to make with a tailor. So rather than finding pants that would need a lot of work done in order to fit, I like to go straight to pants that are already gonna kind of work, things that aren't too long, so that then I can very easily easily either put some fashion tape to make them a little shorter or have them properly tailored at the tailor. And also this is something that I've found really helpful when it comes to jeans because for me personally I've found that some longer length jeans work with my personal inseam but ultimately going for cropped styles tends to be perfect. I'm able to get something that hits exactly where I like on my ankle and gives me the versatility so that I can wear them with flats, boots, heels, and every shoe that I have in my closet. Another thing I avoid as a petite in order to make getting dressed a lot easier and ultimately shopping a lot more enjoyable is tops that have seams in the wrong place. So when you are petite, or maybe you're just smaller framed up top, but you're also tall, these are things that are gonna come into play with how something looks intentional or unintentional when you wear it. And especially when you're working with a smaller frame overall, there are certain points that are gonna bring you into focus. And for me, those tend to be my shoulder line and my wrists. So things that don't highlight those or fit perfectly on them tend to make things feel unintentionally oversized, sloppy rather than relaxed and casual. So I really go out of my way to make sure that my shoulder seams are exactly where I want them, at exactly where my shoulder tends to move. And in doing so, I'm able to create something that maybe is slightly oversized in its feeling. I can go a size up in a shirt, but keeping that shoulder seam where it's supposed to be makes it look like I did that on purpose. And again, cycles back to that feeling of having things customized to you. And it goes such a long way in really curating your closet. So very similar to that, another thing that I avoid as a petite is oversized jackets or oversized blazers that don't have at least one of those key anchor points. So very similar to the oversized tops, when it comes to wearing an oversized jacket, very, very easy to get lost underneath that. And unless you're really strategic about what you're wearing underneath your oversized jacket or your oversized blazer, it can kind of lose the whole point of the outfit and your styling intention. So what I like to do here is pay attention to, again, the key focal point of your shoulder line, but you can extend that a couple points further with an oversized jacket or blazer. And I think it gives you a lot of versatility. So going with the shoulder line is always a good way to start. I find it's pretty universal for most people that tend to be petite. And then the next one is your wrist. You can get a slightly shortened sleeve or you can cuff your sleeve. And just by showing that off a little bit, it does a lot. And then another one that I really love, especially for my slouchier jackets and my jackets that don't have a clearly defined shoulder line, I like to show my wrist and then show my waist. And just by cinching it at the waist, that creates another point of focus. And again, it goes a really long way in making you clearly clear to see so you don't get lost. And then the last one that I really like is either your knee or your ankle line. So pick whichever one you find flattering on you and whichever one is practical for the weather that you have. And going for either above your knee or at the slimmest point on your ankle, it's gonna give you a lot of versatility and again, go a really long way in allowing you to wear something oversized, but not feel like you're totally lost underneath it. The next thing I avoid as a petite is shoes that make me physically taller, but I can't actually walk in them and they're uncomfortable. I think that everyone that's petite can relate to this. There comes a point in your style where you first discover high heels, you put them on and you feel so tall and it can be really slippery slope before you start feeling like you always need to wear a heel in order to really have a complete outfit and to feel your best. 
But when it comes to actually functioning day to day and actually walking and being able to wear outfits comfortably from morning to night, high heels aren't the most functional or practical. So a couple years ago, I went out of my way to really break this thinking and I only wore flats for a really long time. I got really comfortable with being anchored literally to the ground and then also comfortable with my height so that I could feel very present in who I actually was in my full petite package. And in doing so, I was able to find a set of shoes that were really comfortable and I could wear them. And I could wear them on vacation, walking a lot, and actually use them in a comfortable way day to day. And then from there, I was able to slowly incorporate a couple heels, things that were a little bit lower, still easy to walk in and comfortable, and then also ankle boots that had a little bit of a heel, things that I could again still walk in. And I really recommend this for you if you find yourself trapped in a closet that has a lot of really beautiful shoes but they're really uncomfortable and especially if most of them are high heels I recommend trying to get out of this a little bit being really conscientious about finding your more comfortable practical shoes and then building your outfits around those it gives you a different perspective and then also makes it easier to figure out outfits and outfit combinations and silhouettes and proportions that are gonna be really functional with the shoes that you actually wear every single day and the last thing I want to talk about is plus plunging necklines and specifically things like deep v-necks, scoop necks, things like a wide cowl neck, and then even some sweetheart uh, necklines. And the reason I avoid these is because online and especially on people that are taller or people that have a longer torso, they tend to look really, really great, but the proportions can be a little bit off if you are petite. And for someone like me that's petite and very petite in my torso, it's about 14 and a half inches long, I tend to have v-neck and the scoop necks and deep plunging necklines come basically to my belly button and it's just not functional or practical and you have to end up doing a lot in order to wear that comfortably. So my workaround for this that I've found is to find crop tops and crop tops that have these details also added to them tend to work a lot better because everything's been kind of lifted up a little bit. So like the top that I'm wearing today, this is a crop top again with that deep sweetheart neckline and because because it's all been shrunken a little bit, it fits exactly the way it's supposed to. And everything sits a little bit higher and suits a smaller torso and a petite frame a lot better. So definitely look in crop tops if you haven't yet because they'll look really, really cropped on the website or on the model, but on you, they could be absolutely perfect. So I hope that these tips are helpful for you and I've got definitely more of these I can do if it's something you would like to see more of. Definitely let me know and I can make another iteration of this video. And then also let me know in the comments down below if there's anything that you avoid as a petite, anything that makes getting dressed easier and ultimately your closet curation a lot more enjoyable. And like always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Have a great day.